In this video, we will see how to find the Thevenin equivalent of a circuit containing both independent and dependent sources. This is the given circuit of interest. The load resistor has already been removed and the terminals of interest are indicated. This circuit has one independent voltage source and one independent current source and this is the this is the dependent source looking at the dependent source symbol this symbol has an arrow inside it this means this is a dependent current source and if we look at the controlling magnitude the magnitude is in terms of another circuit current so this dependent source is a current controlled current source which has the abbreviation CCCS. So let's see how we can find Thevenin voltage and Thevenin resistance for this circuit containing both independent and dependent sources. First let's find the Thevenin voltage. The Thevenin voltage is the voltage between the open circuited terminals of interest. So in this circuit the voltage V Thevenin is here. We can find V Thevenin using any circuit analysis technique. Let's see how we can do this using node voltage method. The main steps in applying the node voltage method are shown here. So let's get started. We can ground this bottom node and then we are only left with uh, one essential node of interest in the circuit. And looking at this circuit, we can see that B is connected to ground and A is directly connected to this essential node. This is one conductor drawn stretched out. Therefore, the voltage at this essential node can be represented as V Thevenin. So this is an advantage because in this case, when we solve for the node voltage, we will directly obtain V Thevenin and we do, not, we do not need to do any auxiliary analysis to find V Thevenin after finding the node voltages. So let's apply <coughs> Kirchhoff current law to this essential node. So here we have 1, 2, 3 and 4 branch currents and we can now start writing the KCL equation. So this branch current through the 2 ohm resistor is given by V Thevenin minus 24 over 2. The current in this branch is 4 amps because of the independent current source. The current in this branch is 3I1 because of the current controlled current source. And finally, this branch current is V Thevenin minus 0 over 8 is equal to 0. Because the circuit has a dependent source, we need to write the dependent source constraint equation. And what that means is we need to express I1 in terms of node voltage. So I1 is this branch current. So I1 is given as V Thevenin minus 0 over 8. So now we have two equations and two unknowns and these can be solved to show that V Thevenin comes out 8 volts and I1 comes out 1 amp. Hence we have found our solution. The Thevenin voltage is 8 volts in this case. We can also use mesh current voltage to find V Thevenin. So V Thevenin is the open circuit voltage, which is the voltage here. Suppose we are interested in using the mesh current method. The main steps in applying the mesh current method are shown here. So let's get started. We have three meshes in this circuit. So let's label them IX and this is IY. And then here we follow the direction of the dependent source and we can assume this direction I, Z. Whenever there are current sources in the circuit, they 
lead, they open up the possibility of a super mesh. This dependent current source is only present in one mesh, so this is fine. But this independent current source is present between two meshes. Therefore, we need to form a super mesh and the super mesh boundary can be indicated as follows. So let's start writing the equations. For this mesh, because we have a dependent current source, which is only present in this mesh, we can directly write Iz is equal to 3I1. Let's apply Kirchhoff voltage law to the super mesh. So what we get is minus 24 plus 2. We can see that Ix and Iz flow through the 2 ohm resistor in the same direction. So this gives Ix plus Iz. And then through the 8 ohm resistor, we only have current Iy. So plus 8Iy is equal to 0. Whenever we have a dependent source, we need to have a dependent source constraint equation. So we need to relate I1 to mesh currents. And looking at this circuit, I1 is the current flowing through the 8 ohm resistor. And Iy is the only current flowing through the 8 ohm resistor. So this means I1 is equal to Iy. And now finally, because we had a super mesh, we need to write the super mesh constraint equation to relate Ix, Iy and this 4 amp independent current source. So this can be done by applying Kirchhoff current law to this node. So here we have Ix, we have Iy and we have 4 amp current entering. So applying Kirchhoff current law to this node, sum of currents entering is equal to sum of currents leaving. What we get is the two currents entering are Iy plus 4 and this is equal to Ix. So now we have four equations and four unknowns and these can be solved to show that Ix comes out 5 amps, Iy is equal to I1 comes out 1 amp and then Iz is equal to 3 amps. After solving for the mesh currents, we now need to determine the Thevenin voltage and the Thevenin voltage is the same as the voltage drop across the 8 ohm resistor. Hence, we can find V Thevenin is 8 times I1 and this is equal to 8 volts. So we see that we arrive at the same value for the Thevenin voltage irrespective of the circuit analysis method that is used. Let's see how we can find the Thevenin resistance. When the circuit contains both independent and dependent sources, we can either use method 1 which is the circuit analysis method or we can use a combination of methods 2 and 3, which is to first deactivate independent sources and then apply a test source. Let's see how we can solve for R Thevenin using method 1, which is the circuit analysis method. So we have already found V Thevenin as 8 volts. And the circuit analysis method says, that short circuit the terminals of interest and then find the current I short circuit. And after finding I short circuit, R Thevenin is V Thevenin over I short circuit. So now the circuit analysis task is to find I short circuit. In such circuits, when we short circuit the terminals, we need to have a look at what is the impact of the short circuit on other components in this circuit. Here we can see that the short circuit is in parallel to the 8 ohm resistor. Since current takes the path of least resistance, this means that no current will flow through the 8 ohm resistor and this resistor can be eliminated from the circuit. 
However, for the current source, a current source has no issue with a short circuit in parallel to it. So we will remove the 8 ohm resistor, but we will keep the 4 amp independent current source. Now when we remove this resistor, since no current is going to flow through the 8 ohm resistor, that means current I1 is 0. And this means that this dependent source is going to produce 0 amp current. So this means this current source can be effectively replaced by an open circuit and is no longer having any impact in the circuit. Hence, after short circuiting the terminals, the circuit of interest reduces as follows. So we have the 24 volt source. We have the 2 ohm resistor. We have the 4 amp current source and we have I short circuit which is the variable we are needing to determine. <clears throat> now this circuit we can analyze this circuit using any method. Let's use node voltage method to analyze and find I short circuit. So we can ground this node and because of the short circuit, this means the voltage at this node is 0 volts. And now this can be used to find the branch currents and then I short circuit. So here, suppose we denote this current as I1 and this current is I short circuit. This current I1 is given by voltage at this side minus voltage at this side divided by resistance. We can apply Ohm's law to this resistor. So this gives 24 minus 0 over 2 is 12 amps. Now we can apply Kirchhoff current law to this node. Sum of currents entering is equal to sum of currents leaving. So this means I1 is equal to 4 plus I short circuit and this implies that the short circuit current is 12 minus 4 is 8 amps. Once we find the short circuit current then R Thevenin is given by V Thevenin over I short circuit. So in this case R Thevenin is 1 ohm. So this shows how to apply the circuit analysis method to find the Thevenin resistance for a circuit containing both independent and dependent sources. The main thing to note is the circuit must be treated carefully to reflect the impact of the short circuit. We can also find R Thevenin using combination method 2 and 3. This technique says first deactivate the independent source. This means we replace the voltage source by a short circuit and the current source by an open circuit. However, the dependent source cannot be zeroed. After deactivating the independent sources, apply a test voltage or current source and then R Thevenin is found as ratio of test voltage to test current. So let's see how to apply this method. Let's redraw the circuit first by deactivating the independent voltage and current source. So what we are left with is we replace the voltage source by a short circuit. We have the 2 ohm resistor. We replace the current source by an open circuit. We have the 8 ohm resistor <clears throat> and the current through this is I1. We cannot deactivate dependent sources. So the dependent source remains in the circuit and now we apply a test source at the terminals of interest. We can apply either a independent voltage source or an independent current source and also the magnitude can be any value. Suppose 
we apply an independent test voltage source having magnitude 1 volt then we are interested in determining this current IT that is entering the circuit of interest and then R Thevenin is given by VT over IT. So now the circuit analysis task is to find this current IT and this can be done using any circuit analysis technique. Suppose we use node voltage method so we can ground this node and now because we have the test voltage source directly connected between here and this node the voltage at this node is 1 volt and this is all one node just drawn stretched out so in this case we have 1 2 3 and 4 branch currents we have IT there are four branch currents at this node. So applying Kirchhoff current law to this top node, sum of currents entering, so the current entering is IT is equal to sum of currents leaving. This branch current is 3I1. This branch current is 1 minus 0 over 2. So this is 1 minus 0 over 2. This branch current through the 8 ohm resistor is 1 minus 0 over 8 over 8. <clears throat> now this current I1 we can find its value so I1 is this branch current so this is given by 1 minus 0 over 8 is equal to 1 over 8 amps. And substituting this value of I1 here, we can show that IT comes out 1. After finding IT, we can now find R Thevenin. So R Thevenin is given by VT, the test voltage source magnitude divided by this current IT. So this is equal to 1 over 1, which is 1 ohm. So this illustrates how a combination of method 2 and 3 can be used to find the Thevenin resistance. And irrespective of what method we use, we arrive at the same answer. This is the final summary result. So this circuit containing one independent voltage source, one independent current source, one current control current source and two resistors. From the point of view of terminals A and B, this whole circuit is equivalent to this circuit where V Thevenin is 8 volts and R Thevenin is 1 ohm.